The SQL WHERE clause is another foundational command you'll use in SQL to filter out data based on conditions that you specify. Let's look at how it works in Excel and then how to do it in SQL. Hi, I'm Tom Hinkle and I'm here to teach you Excel, SQL, and many other cool things. So we should have our Excel workbook open with our Northwind database here. And we see we've got all these columns here, order date, ship date, ship mode, customer, customer name. We've looked at these before. And let's go check how many rows we have again. So I've got about 10,000 rows. Now, as I want to work with this data, I don't want to work with all 10,000 rows at the same time. I want to filter it down or limit it. So in Excel, it's pretty easy. If you've got a table, you just click on filter up here then you got the little filter button for everything. So if we wanted to filter down by the segment of product, we could click this drop down, and we've got consumer, corporate, or home office. So I could just take the checkbox off select all and select consumer. And now it filters it down to just the consumer records. If I wanted to go further and say, I want to look at things in the consumer market, but that are only in North Carolina, I can go over to state and I can filter that down. I can go search for it here. I'll have to take my check off here and then go down to North Carolina. And what if I want to add South Carolina too, because they're right next to each other. I could do that. Okay. And then the other thing I could do is all the way on the end here, I could filter my sales down. So on this one, you get choices, but there's a lot. We want to do more of a holistic, like how many sales are over $200. So we'll go to number filters, look at all the sales that are greater than, let's just say $500. And click OK. And we've got a handful there that are in the criteria we specified. And then if we wanted to see the other way that we're less than, we could click this drop down again and change it to less than. 500. Now to clear these filters, one of the things we can do is go up here and there's a clear button right on that ribbon, clears all the filters off. What if we want to see something that has many different products? Like in product name, there's a, a manufacturer called uh, Bevis that has many different types of tables. We want to see all those. Let's look at our drop down here. And if I want to in this drop down, I can, I can click in the search and just start typing and Excel will filter that down for us. And you see how it's got all the tables that we want to see. So we're going to go ahead and select all the search results and click OK. And then we've got all those tables there. But we didn't have to specify each one individually. Well, let's go over to SQL Server and see how to do all of this within SQL. OK, so I'm going to pop up my SQL Server and I already have it open to the Northwind orders database. So we're going to start with our basic select. I'm going to right click on it and go to script table as select to and a new query window. Now you should be familiar with this. Select lets us specify the columns we want to include in that query and from is the actual table name in our database. So we're going to get rid of um, ship date and order date. We don't need to see those necessarily. And the rest will kind of keep there. That'll be good. And let's just click uh, Execute to see what that brings back. So that brings back our whole table, our 9,994 rows. But now we want to start filtering it down. So in our select here, after the from statement, we want to put another line. And we're going to type where. So to start with, let's look at categories. We've got office supplies, furniture, technology. Let's look at all the office supplies as a category. So here, you have to be a little bit more descriptive. So we're going to type in category. And as you see, it starts coming up here. Once it comes up, you can use your arrow keys to go down and hit tab, and it'll complete the word. So we want where category is equal to, and then do a single quote, and we're going to type now let's run this. Well, now we've only got 6,000 rows, and they're all the office supplies categories. So with where, we're just telling it what we want to see here. What about another one? What if we wanted to just see the state is equal to North Carolina? So I could just do that, 
and I can just type it. State is equal to North Carolina. And I'll hit execute. And now I just have North Carolina sales. There's only 250 rows there, so that's a lot less. So what about if I want to see another state? Well, there's several ways to do this, but as long as we're on descriptive characteristics, and that means non-numerics, you can use something called the in operator. And what I can do there is I can say in, put a parenthesis around my first state, and then I can put a comma and type the next state. And then why don't we put in one more? Minnesota. And we'll click Execute there. So I've got the states North Carolina, Minnesota, North Carolina. Uh, where's South Carolina? There's South Carolina. All right. So we've just looked at categorical fields so far, but we can also do numeric fields here. So we've got our sales here. I can actually do where sales is greater than 1,000. And I'll click Execute. And now we have 468 rows where the sales are greater than 1,000. And I can also do less than. What if I wanted to see the number of sales that were less than 1,000? I can do that too. What if I wanted to see sales that were in between $500 and $700? So there's another keyword here that says between 500 and 700. And that works, the between works with numeric fields or dates. So I can go ahead and click execute there. And I get all the sales that are between 500 and $700. One of the things we're gonna add to this, it's kind of another command, but we're gonna throw it in here. I'm looking at the sales between 500 and 700 but they're not in any good order. It'd be really nice if they were in an order. So this is a separate command, but after the where clause, it's usually the last thing you put in a SQL statement, we're gonna add the order by. And this clause will tell SQL Server how we want to order our data. So we want to order by sales. So now I can go ahead and click Execute. And now we've ordered our data by sales from smallest to largest. And if you want to flip that around and go largest to smallest, you just type DESC at the end of sales, and that stands for descending order. So I'll click that, and now my highest sales are on top and goes down to lowest. But we'll just leave that off there. If not, it just defaults to ascending. Well, now let's look at another operator on the where clause, and that's the like. And what that does is this, the like is gonna let us approximate text-based searches. So I'm gonna wipe this out here, and we're gonna try to find that product that started with Bevis again. So I'm gonna just say product name, like, single quote, B-E-V-I-S, and now I have to put a percent sign. In SQL Server, percent is the wildcard character. That means look for anything that starts with B-E-V-I-S, and it can end with anything else down the line. So I'll close that quote there and then uh, hit execute. And now we've got all of our Bevis tables there. But they're in a different order too, aren't they? It's kind of mixed up. So what do we do there? We go down and modify our order by to do product name. And it orders by product name so I can see all those products grouped together. We've covered the basics of where, how to search one field for certain values, but what if we want to filter our table down by multiple fields? What if we want to look at the region as central and the segment as consumer? So let's do that here. Let's do region equals central. And then I'm going to use the and keyword. That's a logical operator and says, hey, do everything where the region is central and the segment is equal to consumer. And I will sort by region and segment. 
my last quote there and click execute. So now we've got it where the region is central, it's all central, and the segment is all the consumer segment. So I've limited down my table by two fields, not just one. So let's try another example. Let's try to look at the state of North Carolina where our sales are over $200. and sales is greater than 200. Order by and click execute. So now I have all the state of North Carolina, it's about 58 rows, and all the sales that are greater than 200. And if I want to go less than 200, I could just switch that right there to less than 200. And I get all the sales that are less than 200. Let's put this back. And so the AND keyword joins two criteria together and both of them have to be true. There's another one called OR that lets either one of them be true. So when we put an OR here, what that's going to do is that's going to bring us back all the records from North Carolina in addition to all the sales that are greater than 200. So let's look at the, what that does. Click execute there. Well now we have multiple states here, but that's because they have sales that are greater than 200. That was part of it. So the or lets you evaluate either condition and brings back everything that's in either one of those. So now we will also have less than 200 as well. If I order this by sales, so here I've got sales that are less than 200, but it's because they were also in North Carolina. So or will bring back everything in this statement or this statement. So that is about all you need to know about the WHERE clause, how to use it to filter down your data to work with a smaller set and get the results that you want. All right, talk to you next time.